Wonder Woman 783. It's amazing, isn't it? 783 issues of Wonder Woman. I think some of us will live long enough to see a thousand. That's pretty cool. Literally just a thousand titles of Wonder Woman. That's pretty sick, if you ask me. This book has been an interesting one. You know, I think it opened up so strong. Had some weird moments in between. This current crop of story is pretty fun, actually. I gotta say, I, I really, really like what they're going for here. Using a character like Image Maker instead of like Mirror Master or Ventriloquist or someone who could easily do something similar to this. It's kind of cool, I gotta say. I think that's a really fun idea. And it's playing again with a great use of Dr. Psycho. I, I'm so on board when Dr. Psycho gets some great use. This book is doing fantastic stuff like that. I absolutely adore it. So we open up this book. We see that Dr. Psycho is talking to somebody. He's giving them this helmet. He's like, you know, you're my honorable paladin. And every honorable paladin needs a suit of armor. Here's your finishing touch. A sword. You will be my shining knight. You will be my chevalier. And it's like, yeah, look at this. It's like... He made a Shining Knight. It's not Justin. We, we confirm it's not Justin. And we don't say who it's actually going to be, which is kind of interesting. I like it. Again, I, I think making Shining Knight this kind of interesting part of the story, it works a lot because we just spent a lot of time in Valhalla. We just went to Olympus. He's a character kind of in his own realm, but with part of this larger picture. So I think that works really well. So as that's happening, we see that elsewhere, Dead Man and Wonder Woman are still fighting these lookalikes Wonder Woman. They're kind of like breaking through the reins. They're trying to figure out, okay, where are these coming from? We have to trace it. We have Etta on the job to trace them. And she might have figured out the locations, like this weird park in like New Hampshire, I think she said. Just like this abandoned amusement park. So hopefully we can get there. And we see on the streets in DC that Steve Trevor is fighting his way through the hordes. And he looks up to see a Wonder Woman breaking through the ranks of the other Wonder Woman. And he just smiles and he's like, yep, that's my girl right there. We see Edda's trying to run up a bunch of stairs. She gets to see Wonder Woman. She's like, I know where they're coming from. It's this weird carnival place. You should be able to get there soon. And you see Dead Man still fighting away kind of building up like yeah diana and dead man's a great combination i do like it and before she can get away to actually like go to this amusement park who runs through the door none other than steve trevor and finally after countless issues of teasing the possibility of these two returning they do you know he just gives her a big hug she's like i don't know what to say he's like i don't know what to say either and then boston comes in and he's like i've heard a lot about you and diana tries to shut him up but before the conversation can really continue. A big th boom comes down and we see the Shining Knight comes in to fight. And his speech bubbles are fantastic. Just that really classic Callister looking, you know, font. It's really cool. I really dig it. And just people beating each other up. We just get a Shining Knight versus Wonder Woman fight. And it's pretty cool. And she learns quickly who sent him. He's like Lord Sisko or something. And he easily comes to terms with that idea, and as they're fighting, we see that Etta and Steve kind of, like, head off to do their own mission somewhere else, because, like, if this is out of their depth, what are they gonna do? And we also see that Dead Man can't really break into this guy's helmet. But again, who is this supposed to be? I was trying to think as we're reading the book, and I'm like, okay, is it Siegfried? He's still dead, but did Psycho find a way to bring him back? Is this going to be another character from the history of Wonder Woman that we're pulling in? I kind of like the idea it's just some guy that Psycho's using and not like a random person throughout the history. I could see it being some Siegfried interpretation. Maybe someone descended from Siegfried. Who really knows? Any Anything like that works well. We get a really nice scene in the fight where Diana throws her tiara at him, smacks his head, and then she just catches it. It's really cool. And as they're fighting, he's like, what treachery is this? And behind him is just like all the image maker Wonder Woman's coming to fight. And then they kind of like make a semi-alliance that they're going to work together to take down some of these clones so they go back to back and start swinging at all these mirror versions of wonder woman it's very cool and it kind of plays this fact like this obviously there's some free will put into this shining knight where he is capable of making his own decisions that are not connected to that of dr psycho so i wonder if we're going to have him become a supporting character after this because you know, Shy Knight is kind of on the verge of, like, the myth and mystery side of Wonder Woman. So it would make sense that he'd be a part of that, too. You know, Dead Man's right there of, like, the horror stuff. It makes sense that if we're diving into this, we take the other kind of, like, you know, Arthurian character, like the Shy Knight, and bring him here. 
I think that's pretty cool. Again, I, I think The Shining Knight would make a great TV show, and I hope we see more of this character in the future. But his sword just cuts through a bunch of the Mere Wonder women. It's looking pretty sick, I gotta say. That stuff is pretty fun. And as that's going on, we see on Themyscira that Hippolyta has returned. This is a scene that takes place after the events of Nubia and the Amazons number five. So Hippolyta is back on Themyscira. She's looking at the mirrored version of what she assumes is her daughter, but it's not. It's one of the image maker versions that she comes to attack and she just shatters it. And it's like, okay, you cannot kill me. I'm Hippolyta, baby. And again slowly and methodically setting up this trial of the amazon storyline which is mere days away at this point isn't it it's very soon it's gotta start soon i have a lot more thoughts on wonder woman stuff which we'll get to next week when we talk about it but we also get the backup in this book and i don't want to spoil the backup because it's going to tie directly into the trial of the amazon stuff let's just say that Faruka and Artemis are coming to terms with how they're going to handle the situation. And hopefully they are on the winning side. I don't think they will be, but hopefully stuff like that works out well. So I think what really amazes me about this book more than anything is that it's directly going to be linked to, like you can't do Trial of the Amazons without Wonder Woman. And she's still over here just doing her own thing. That's really weird to me, you know, like, Clunan and Conrad are still telling their story. It's with Dr. Psycho, it's with Shining Knight, it's with Steven Edda, and I'm like, that's great, but you'd think eventually they'd want to, like, swing over and do something with the other characters now. I get why they're not, but I, I just think there'd come the point where you'd want to. And I maybe we'll get there, maybe I'm just overreacting, I'm like, okay, this is a lot of nothing going nowhere, but I do have high hopes, and I do believe we're going to get there eventually. But the artwork is solid, it's very fun, it's great to see a Wonder Woman story that doesn't have her, you know, pandering to the demographic that wants her to be violent and hysterical. She, she's an uplifting character, and we're seeing that portrayed here really well. I do like that, and Shining Knight, a great addition and a great way to throw this character into this world. I think that's really cool, and I'm very excited for what this book's going to offer. So, Wonder Woman, issue number 783, I'm going to give a 7 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.